Hi, I'm Mark with the WD Purple product team. I'm here today with Louie from LTS, and we're gonna to talk today about an exciting new technology from LTS called hybrid illumination. Hybrid illumination dynamically switches the modes, the optical modes of the camera uh, to use either infrared or white light uh, optical sensing. So it delivers the clearest and most detailed image, no matter what the lighting conditions are. Louie, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, about LTS hybrid illumination technology. So with these cameras, these are called our hybrid illumination cameras. Uh, what that really entails is that there are different modes for the way it's able to light up the area. So for one is you've got the white light, uh, visible white light. If you are in a dark area and you turn on the white light, it's pretty much like a floodlight. Lights up the area, you get a color image. If the area is light uh, lit up well enough where you don't need to utilize that then that white light does not need to be on uh, you'll be able to get a color image regardless uh, second way is going to be utilizing the same leds but is running an ir mode ir mode is going to be that kind of the reddish hue when you look at it it's not visible to the human eye but the camera itself is able to kind of see clearly at night the IR mode is going to be in black and white, so everything is going to be in the black and white image. We do have a third mode, which is your hybrid mode. Hybrid mode is where the image is going to be in black and white, and whenever it detects a human or vehicle, it will switch over to your color mode. Color mode uh, where it lights up the, uh, the white vis uh, visible light, and you'll see in color, and whenever the motion, whatever is done, it'll switch back to your IR mode. All right, so how does the hybrid illumination technology work? How does the camera know to switch modes? The camera will actually have a photo sensor that will let it know that, okay, do we need the light on or off? But as far as switching between the different modes, between your IR mode or your color mode, then that is actually done uh, manually on the camera itself. Okay. And why is this technology useful? Why wouldn't I just set the camera for one type of illumination versus the other? It gives more of like a flexibility because these days when you are the installer, you're wanting to go out and install some of these cameras, then you kind of have to look at the environment. Is this area going to be bright enough to where we can actually see in color without your IR? Because IR, like I said, is going to be black and white. Um, if that area is pitch black and you're not able to kind of uh, utilize your white light or utilize you know, IR then that really doesn't make sense because you're not going to be able to see anything. Uh, so with this technology, yes, you are going to be able to use one or the other. Uh, you don't need to kind of stock uh, a lot of different types of cameras before you go out on the job site. You kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out of the way. Um, can a motion or detection event change the illumination mode? Yes, these hybrid illumination cameras, they they do have a special mode. Uh, on that one, what it'll do is it'll actually be in your IR mode, so black and white. Whenever it detects the motion happening, like let's say a vehicle comes into view or a person comes into view, it switches into your color mode. And once that uh, object, person, whatever has gone, it'll switch back into your IR. And does that color mode deliver a sharper or clearer image? Usually, if you're doing your IR mode, it's in black and white, and you lose out a lot of the details. So let's say there's a vehicle coming in. Okay, what color is the vehicle? You can't tell if it's a black and white image. So that's where the color comes into play. It helps you to get more details. Um, and so if you're needing that footage as evidence, you can actually be able to identify what's going on. What are the different type of objects that can change the illumination modes? Illumination is where, well, the AI, you've got the uh, triggers on there. You can filter it out for human or vehicle or both. So if you want uh, or have those features turned on and it detects a person walking in or you take a car, just kind of drive it into the area, that is what's able to trigger it to switch your modes. All right. So it also sounds like it's ideal for 24 by seven conditions where the lighting may be changing different times of the day. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So yeah, the white light that's on there, you don't have to have that on because the white light is like a physical white light that's shining down like a floodlight. 
Uh, I've seen that a lot of people, they really don't want that on because it's kind of distracting, it stands out too much, they want a little bit more low profile. So that's where this comes into play because these cameras, they are able to see 24 seven in color, uh, but if that's a pitch black condition, we need to at least illuminate it somehow. So you can either turn on the IR, which gives that reddish glow, but you're not physically seeing the light lighting up the area, or you can use that white light, which is the floodlight that's shining in that area. Or if you do have enough lighting in the area, then you don't even have to have any light on, on at all, and you can see in color. And Louis, uh, in addition to objects triggering the, the change of illumination, uh, can it also be set on a schedule? Yes, you can go into a schedule and you can set it to, okay, I want it to be um, showing the color at this time, from this time to this time, or I want it to be black and white from this time to this time. So yeah, you can customize that and have it do work how you like it. And in addition to the illumination, can you also change the resolution or field of view, or is that set through the camera? Uh, resolution or field of view is pretty much going to be set. Uh, once you set it, you kind of don't need to mess with it. You just kind of one of those set and forget type of things. Yeah. I really don't see anybody like want to lower the resolution. They usually want to set it to what's the highest that camera can do. So yeah, that's what I've seen. Yeah, and is there a lapse in recording? Does the camera take a pause when it's switching modes or is it continuous? If we're looking at the older generation of cameras, then yes, whenever it switches from your um, your standard day mode to your night mode, which is basically whenever it turns on the light, whether it's IR or whether it's the color light that's on there, yeah, there will be, I would say, like four or five seconds, moments of time where it's kind of blinded because the actual sensor needs to adjust to that newer uh, lighting condition. With these cameras, you don't have that. Uh, from our testing, it's been less than a second, like half a second or less. Well, that's really important. So these new LTS cameras are able to dynamically switch without having that lapse in coverage. So you have a continuous picture. Yes, security. definitely. Because whenever it switches, then yeah, you've got that few seconds. If that few seconds something is happening, then yeah, in the old ones, you don't get to see what's happening there. Yeah. Now let's talk about storage for a little bit. Does the, do the different types of modes put out a different type of video stream that uh, might be different size, for example? The cameras themselves, they will have three different streams. Uh, so you've got your main stream, which is your highest resolution stream. It's going to use the most amount of bandwidth and data. We do have a substream. Substream is usually used for if you're trying to access it from like a mobile device or anything where your connection is not as big as far as your bandwidth. And then we also have a third stream that is customized also. So if you have something that's even more restraint as far as your data connection, it can be utilized there. All right, let's talk about the destination of storage. So is there on-camera storing recording? Is the recording on a NVR or both? Yes, it's going to be both because the cameras themselves, they will have a micro SD card slot. Um, you can actually have a micro SD card in there, uh, utilize different settings to record onto the camera, and it's also able to send it back to your recorder, which is usually what most people will do. But yeah, there is flexibility as, as far as having your recording done. And LTS, you also have a technology that can switch the, the recording and storage point, right? Isn't that called ANR? Yes, ANR, Automatic Network Replenishment. What that means is, of course, you've got your cameras connected to your network. That network is connected to your recorder, and your recorder is recording all the video that's going through. In any instance where the camera loses connection with your recorder, then it's still recording onto the SD card. So whenever that connection has been regained, then it'll send that video back to the recorder for storage. Uh, I would like to say that there are some prerequisites if you're wanting to utilize that method, because a lot of times you will have your camera plugged into your recorder, like the built-in PoE. Uh, if the power goes out, then what's going to be powering up the camera? If you don't have power into the camera, it's not going to be recording to the SD card and get the footage. And so, yeah, you just need to make sure that we do have some type of backup power supply or a UPS that's powering up those cameras in case that connection is lost through to power outage or a physical data connection, then it's still able to record on the camera. Right, right, sounds good. 
And when the, you're recording on camera onto the micro SD card, uh, you're using WD Purple micro SD cards, is that right? Yes, WD Purple is going to be preferred because it is dependable, more reliable, it has the most read and write cycles because SD cards, they are solid state. Uh, so there are limitations as far as how many times you can uh, write your data, erase it and write over it because your cameras are on 24 hours a day. And so in order for something like that to last, you need to get a more quality uh, card. Right, and the WD Purple surveillance grade uh, micro SD cards, they're not the same uh, same quality as a retail card, that, even though it might say video, right? is that right? Yes, definitely. Um, those WD Purples, they are made for your more of endurance, this style of recording, 24 hours a day, and so yeah, they will be a lot better than we're just the market. And what's the highest capacity of a WD Purple micro SD card that you support in these cameras? On these cameras, if you look at the specs, they are rated for up to 512. Um, will a larger capacity work? Yeah, but you know, officially support is going to be 512. Yeah, 512 is, is a quite a bit of headroom, not only for now, but also for future growth or if you want to increase your days of storage retention on the camera itself. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Louie, great to hear about uh, LTS hybrid illumination technology and the range of cameras that support it. They include uh, support for WD Purple micro SD cards, but thank you for joining us today. I learned a lot. Okay, thanks, man. All right.